seventh Sunday after Pentecost. I see there's an announcement up here about the Henning Methodist Women Coffee Roll and Christian Fellowship plus a bake sale Thursday, July 28th from 9 to 12. Some bizarre item includes quilts and dish towels. Any other announcement? Well, and they're supporting our veterans dinner, so it would be nice if some could go over. Tuesday at 11 o'clock at Carnivans, Carnivans, and I always mispronounce Funeral Home, Gary Nushwander's uh, service will be held. At 10 o'clock is visitation. So Tuesday, 10 o'clock visitation, 11 o'clock funeral service. Any other announcement? If not, um, last service we went over by <clears throat> A lot of times, so we're going to cut out some verses and do some other things, so let's get started. Please stand as you're able, and with our opening praise from 2022, Great is the Lord. Rejoice and be glad in it. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. The hour is coming, and now is, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. 369, Blessed Assurance.
pray. O Lord, our God, you are always more ready to, do, to bestow your good gifts on us than we are to seek them and are willing to give more than we desire or deserve. Help us to seek that we may truly find, so to ask that we may joyfully receive, so to knock that the door of your mercy may be opened to us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Number 405. morning is taken from Hosea chapter 1 verse 2 through 10. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. For like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. So he married Gomer, daughter of Diblaim. And she conceived and bore him a son. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call him Jezreel, because I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre at Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. In that day, I will break Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel. Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call her Lo Ruhamah, which means not loved. For I will no longer show love to Israel, that I should at all forgive them. Yet I will show love to Judah, and I will save them, not by bow, sword, or battle, or by horses and horsemen. But I, the Lord their God, will save them. After she had weaned Lo Ruhamah, Gomer had another son. Then the Lord said, Called him Lo Amin, which means not my people. For you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the Israelites will be like the sand on the seashore, which cannot be measured or counted. In the places where it was said to them, You are not my people. They will be called children of the living God. Please join me as we read Psalm 85 on page 806. Lord, you showed favor to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath and turned from your hot on anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear that God will speak, for the Lord will speak peace to his people, to the faithful, to those who turn to the Lord in their hearts. Surely salvation is at hand for those who fear the Lord, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. 
Faithfulness will spring out from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and all land will yield it increase. Righteousness will go before the Lord, and make God's footsteps away. Our second reading this morning is taken from Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 15. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your life in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through the hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and on the elemental spiritual force of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charges of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it all away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. We will sing hymn number 354. We will sing first, second, and third verses only. One through three. reading this morning is taken from Luke chapter 11 
verse 1 through 13. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me, the door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, fathers, if, you, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. This week I had a lot easier time picking which sermon to preach. I knew I did not want to preach Hosea, um, Hosea with <laughs> not love and not my people. I mean, that, that one just jumped out as, don't preach that. <laughs> you know, uh, so I'm going to preach on the gospel message again this week. And the reason I'm going to skip over the Colossians passage is we don't have enough time to get into that. As I mentioned, we went over a good 15 minutes at Otter Tail. So we cut off some verses over here. Hopefully I won't preach as long. So let's get at it. On the surface, when we first read this, we see that it appears that there are two parts. Part A appears to be that Jesus was praying and his disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. And we have what I call the Lord's Prayer, but not in the form that you and I am very familiar with. And then it seems as if though there's a second part where Jesus tells this parable about if you had a friend that arrived and you had to go and ask, and he gave that famous quote that is also found in the book of Matthew along with the, what we know as the Lord's Prayer. Ask, and it shall be what? Given. Seek. Yet at the same time, uh, we see, I, I believe that Luke was right putting the two together. And that it's really one thing that Jesus wants to teach us. So let's look at it. The scripture starts off so beautifully. It says, one day Jesus was what? Praying. As a matter of fact, Jesus had the habit of praying. We see over and over again, before any big event that happened in his life, he went off to what? To pray. Isn't that how he started his ministry? 40 days in the wilderness, praying. Before he went to the cross, he went to the garden to what? To pray. We read over and over again in scripture that early in the morning Jesus would arise before all the other disciples and he would go off and pray. And his disciples noticed this. As a matter of fact, some of his disciples used to be John's disciples. And 
So one of his disciples, when they, he noticed that Jesus was off praying, when he finished and he came back, one of his disciples, we don't know which one, said to, the, to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John had taught his disciples. Jesus, you know, Lord, we're your disciples. Teach us how to pray. And we get what we call the Lord's Prayer. Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Did he say that we have to pray this prayer every time? No. Quite often we miss the point. The Lord's Prayer is a model. It's a model prayer. And, 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 and you, you know, we use different words. For example, Jesus in, in the Luke passage, it just says, Father. We usually say what? Our Father. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And, and that's exactly what it Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. The first part about praying to God is to address Him as our Father. And that He is indeed who He is and we are who. Father, how, you know, you are hallowed, you are great, you are holy. Your kingdom rules. And then the second part is about Asking, give us this day our daily bread. And then it talks about forgiveness. So in, 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 in prayer, it seems as if though part A is addressing God for who He is. Heavenly Father, hallowed be Thy name. The second part is that we... we Ask God for, to provide for our daily needs. Our daily needs. And then the third part seeing about well, getting our relationship with right, right with God. Forgive us all what? Our sins. But there's a, there's a little provisional in there. You know, forgive us our sins, we say, as we forgive others. But here it reads a little bit different, and I like the way it reads here. It says, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And I like that. And, and here's the reason why. A lot of us have a problem with forgiveness. I, I, you know, and, and the problem is we think that somebody has to ask for forgiveness. I don't know about you, but here, here's what I've learned. And I, I had to learn it the hard way. But one time, I, one of my brothers did something against me. Doesn't matter. You know. And for years, I carried around. You know, I was angry. I thought about it for a long time. And finally, I got up the courage and I went and talked to him about, you know, the problem. That, you know, we need to settle this. We need to forgiveness. And what I discovered was he didn't even remember the incident. Who was suffering all that time? I was. I was the one who did not forgive and was carrying the guilt and the shame and, you know, the, the anger. And so what Jesus is saying, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. In other words, as Christians, we are to forgive rather than carry the guilt, the shame, the anger, and all the problems that comes with it. They do not sometimes deserve to be forgiven, but forgiveness starts where? With us. We are a people who forgive people regardless. That does not mean we are stupid and we just forget and open ourselves up for them to wrong us again. But forgiveness is about letting go the hurt, the pain, the anger. So Jesus says, as we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Folks, at night, you know, I forgive everything, I let it go, I go to bed at peace. And I hope people forgive me because I make a lot of mistakes. And that's what it says, forgive us our sins as we forgive others. And then it says, and lead us not into temptation. There's none of that, thine is the kingdom. And if you really look at the Luke, the, not only the Luke passage, but the Matthew passage, uh, the earlier text never had that also. 
So I believe that this is what we would call the what? The Lord's Prayer. And then we see, then Jesus said to them, and he tells them this parable. And I want for us to catch the point. The parable is just a continuation of what? Prayer. It's not two different things. It's talking about prayer. And let's look at it. Jesus explained to them why this model prayer. He goes, suppose you have a friend. And you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And so imagine the situation. Midnight, especially back then, um, you know, today we have what we call spook lights outside or you could hit a switch and, you know, you could, you could peek through the little hole or look. But back then, once they locked those doors at night when it was dark, they wouldn't want to open it because they could get what? robbed or killed you know you said so uh, suppose the one inside say don't bother me the door's already locked and all my children and I are in bed it's midnight it's been dark for what four or five hours at least even up here in Minnesota you know it's dark don't bother me he, Jesus said guess what I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. And what was Jesus' point? Jesus' point is, if you went to somebody and knocked at midnight and asked them for something, they will get up and give it to you one would be just to get rid of you. I mean, uh, unless you're in, I mean, I think I'll be calling the cops, you know? There's a crazy person outside. That, that, you know, but he said he wouldn't do it for friendship, but he will get up. And we see the situation here was you would only ask is because you had a what? A need. If you had the bread at home, would you not just fix it and give it to your friend that's on journey? You would do it, wouldn't you? But if you were desperate and had this need, he said, I mean, there's the explanation. Jesus said, suppose you had a friend and you go to him at midnight and said, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food for him. So you have a need and you explain what the need is. You know, I don't have any bread right now to give. It's too dark. I can't. He said, because of your need, you have this shameless audacity that he will get up and give you all that you need. He goes on and Jesus explains. So I say to you, and we know this, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find, knock, and the door will be open to you. And we sometimes try to break this up into three different parts again. But in reality, it's the one event. Put it in the context of the story. You have a need, no food for your friend that is on the journey. So you go to another friend and what? Ask. But in going to, to people, let's be realistic. I don't know about you. But as I read the scripture, ask and it will be given. Will the answer always be yes when you ask somebody for something? I don't know about you. Growing up as a little kid, I, I, I had a sugar thing. You know, I like candy. I still like, well, y'all know that, you know. As a kid, I would go ask my mother for money to go buy a candy bar. I'm number seven out of eight. She's single parent. We're poor. Guess what her answer was? It was no. I don't have it. Except she said it in a more colorful way, you know. Uh, that I understood only too well. 
not to ask again the next time I wanted candy. Because the answer was always what? No. I mean, she was too busy trying to put a roof over her head, clothes, and feed us. But across town, I had an uncle that had a little store. And when I really, really wanted to have a piece of candy, I would make the trip and go ask my uncle. And I don't know if y'all remember, uh, there was a little candy called Smarties, a little packet. He, he was smart. Kids usually don't have money. But every once in a while, you find a penny or a nickel. And so you could go and he'd open a Smartie and sell you one for a penny off the pack. So I'd make the journey and I might get two or three Smarties for free. Mom didn't have it, so I went and asked somebody else. And this is what Jesus is saying. Seek. The, the, you had to go, if you went to the first neighbor and they had no bread, could they give you what they don't have? My mother said it very clearly. I can't give you what I don't. So if you go seeking and somebody don't have it, they don't have it. What Jesus said, seeking is a part of the deal. You, if you go and look for it at this place and it's not there, you go where? Somewhere else. And if they don't have it, you go somewhere else. And, um, so seeking is not the first time you go, you're going to get there. It's like in sales. I don't know how many of y'all ever been in sales. Most people, you go ask them, hey, you want to buy X, Y, and Z, what's the answer? No. I mean, it doesn't matter what you're selling. I mean, have any of y'all ever had a door-to-door -door encyclopedia man or any of those people come to your door? I mean, they're trying to stick their foot in the door so they can, you know, before you close it and tell them no. <laughs> but do they give up? No, they go from the next, from one door to the next door. They do some seeking. They do some what? Some knocking. Door number one said door. Door number two said no. Door number three said no. Maybe number six or seven might say what? Yes. Isn't that the way life is? Sometimes you have to seek and knock on more than one door. Let me give you another example. As a kid, Young men, I got interested in girls. I can tell you, some of them wouldn't give me five seconds. Five minutes was too long. I'd go out and meet them. But I was, I was like this, Jesus said, because of your shameless audacity. And every young man noticed you go and try to ask a girl out and you get a what? No. I know it happened with me, with my wife. The first time I tried, you know, went out with her, she told me, go away. <laughs> and I went away and I came back the next day and she said, I thought I told you to go away. And I said, and I did, and now I'm back. <laughs> the reality is, did I just ask one time for a date? Two times? The reality is, most people say no, and in sales, it takes seven asks before a person might change their mind and say what? Yes. As young men, I guess we had more courage to ask. But how many of us never had the courage? And before we got enough courage to go ask a girl, somebody already asked and beat us to it. Jesus is saying, have that shameless audacity to ask to go out of, on a limb and ask, seek and you shall find. Not, there, you're going to get some rejection. I know I did. I mean, like I said, some girls didn't even give me five seconds, much less five minutes. I went to a funeral a few years back and one of the young ladies that I knew in high school that, you know, she was too good. She realized, you know, she, she came up to me and said, I'm sorry, I didn't realize, you know. I go, I go, yeah, back then I wouldn't want to date me too. I mean, single parent, number seven out of eight, dirt poor. But I'm glad God 
led me to who I have because of my shameless audacity to what? Ask and keep on asking. And that's what Jesus is saying. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Seeking means that you have to get out there and do some what? Some work. It's not going to get the first time. Not, as a matter of fact, as you knock on doors, some people will peek through the hole and say, I don't want any. I don't know how many of you know about the, the young ladies that, you know, that sell those cookies. Every year they put out their little stand. Me, I, 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 when I was poor, I wanted to buy it, but when they asked me, uh, mister, would you want to buy some cookies? I couldn't admit I was broke, so I said what? No, I don't want cookies. The reality is I wanted cookies, but I didn't what? Have the money. And I was too ashamed to say, I don't have the money to a little girl. And when I got older and I had a little bit of money in my pocket, when that little, what they call brownies, came and asked, I was like, give me two boxes. <laughs> I don't want what I want what? Two. The reality is, if you don't ask, you won't get anything. And even if you ask, the worst thing they can say is what? No. no. And sometimes they say no, not because they mean no. They say no because they don't have the money like me. I didn't have the money to buy the cookies. But how many of us give up and quit on the first no? Too many of us are quitters. We ask and, you know, the first girl said no and it's, we quit. Reality, what Jesus is saying, in prayer, we need to ask. And prayer is a form of asking. Think about it. On, on Sunday, each and every Sunday, we ask for what? Prayer requests. And do people always give all? Oh, I thank God for this. Or they do it, ask God, I want healing for X, Y, and Z. Or God, pray for so and so who have this need. If you have a need, you have to ask. Here's the other thing I learned. If you don't ask, can the other person read your mind? I don't know about you, but I've had people come to me with, as a pastor and as a chaplain and say, say, and I'm like, I'm looking at them strange. I'm going, I'm not a mind reader. I didn't know you had that need. If you had asked, I could have said what? But I'm not God. I can't read people's mind. I can tell you, I mean, when it comes to my wife, I, I'm, a, I'm bad at it. I don't know how to read. You know, women are mystery. She has to tell me. And that's what, you know, we're not mind readers unless you speak up. Asking is communicating. Isn't that what prayer is? Or maybe we should think of it in the old English way. They, you know, in, they, they go in front of a judge and the lawyer says, Judge, pr I pray that you grant me X, Y, and Z. What is the lawyer saying to the judge? I'm asking permission for. They use the word prayer. Prayer and asking are what? One and the same. And that's what Jesus is saying. Pray, ask the Father. And he is more than what? Willing to give you. Unfortunately, a lot of us don't ask because we had a no once. And we quit asking. Little do we know that if we read the Bible, the Bible says, God not only wants us to give us our desires, but more than we desire. We prayed it in the opening prayer. And you are willing to give us more than we desire or deserve. God wants to give us more than we desire or deserve. But how many of us settle for less because we are ashamed? Shamelessly ask, audaciously ask. As a matter of fact, Jesus pointed out with the, this metaphor. If a, if a parent have a child and the child asks for a fish, would you give them a snake? Or if a, if a child asks for an egg, would you give them a scorpion? 
And, and he said, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give to you? I like the way this ends too. For many of us, sometimes we ask for the wrong things. As I mentioned as a little kid, I asked for the wrong thing. I asked for candy, but if I asked for things that like basic necessities and food, guess what my mother would do? She'd give it. But candy was a what? Luxury. Listen to the prayer again. Give us this day our what? Daily bread. Not the luxury, not the... But more important than that, let's read that last verse again. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The truth is, God wants to give all of us the what? The Holy Spirit. We sang the song, hymn number 405. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these other things will be what? added to you. But none of us want to get out there and do the work of seeking and doing the knocking and the asking. And Jesus is saying to us, yes, you're going to get some no's, but unless you plunk up the courage, be shameless and ask, most people aren't mind readers and you won't ask so you won't receive. Asking implies that you are willing to risk. Prayer implies that you're willing to go to God and ask. And so today I say, like Jesus, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. In seeking you won't find the first or second time, but keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Keep on asking the word of the Lord. To God. We will sing hymn number 377, It Is Well With My Soul. And we're singing that just because it's my favorite hymn. <laughs>
Please join me as we affirm our faith on page 888. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ, Christ died for, for our sins, was buried, was raised, was raised, raised on, on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter, Peter and the twelve, and, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things are together. God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross, reconciles all things to God. Amen. The next song we will do first, second, and third verse again to save time. Hymn number 397, I Need Thee Every Hour. Church prays for the church in Burundi, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Rwanda. We just sung the song about I need thee every hour. We heard the sermon that we should what? Ask. Asking for prayer. Are there any needs or joys this week? I'd like a prayer request for my cousin Jim Graber. He's going in for a prostate cancer surgery. Judy Mitchell, for the Neuschwander family, for the Kern family. Say that last part. Kern, Kern, Kern family. Anyone else? Judy Mitchell had surgery Tuesday in St. Cloud. She was doing good. She come home. But now her potassium drops, so she's back in Wadena Hospital. Okay. Anyone else? Let us go to the Lord in prayer, followed by a moment of silent prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Loving God, we come this day praising you and worshiping you. Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Father, we do pray each and every day for the daily things that we need. The reality is, O oh Lord, we need you every day, every hour. 
Without you, life would be lived in vain. We ask that you be with us as a church. Father, we are lacking in so many ways. We ask that you help us and provide for us as a church. We ask for the church also in Burundi, the, in the Republic of Congo and Rwanda. Lord, areas in the heart of Africa that has many, many problems. Lord, we ask that you be with the world, especially during this time where we have a pandemic that is worldwide, COVID. We see that this pandemic has led to war, to nations that are almost completely bankrupt and some that are. Lord, we pray for the war in Ukraine and for the grain export and for those who are starving even now. Father, we pray for the leaders both in Ukraine and Russia and the EU and the United States. Lord, we truly need your guidance. Bless the leaders. Allow them to have a heart of seeking first your will rather than their selfish personal ambition. Father, we pray these, for these many requests. June, who is going for prostate cancer, for Judy, who is recovering, for the Nushwander family with the loss of Gary, for the Kern family. Lord, you know our needs before we ask, but you want us to come and pray. And so now, Father, because some people were afraid and did not want to voice the opinion, we pause for a moment of personal prayer and personal confession. And now as your children, your people, we pray the words the Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory forever and ever. Amen. Any gift given in love can transform the world. Let us give generously. The morning offering will now be taken.
join me in the offertory of prayer? Bless these Please gifts with your love and grace. grace. Transform, Transform us, that rooted in love, we may give all, all that we have, have and all that we are, are to serve you and your world, world with love that knows no bounds. Amen. Amen. Or closing him, hymn 714, I know who I might believe. Glorious gift. We go forth to give love to God's world. 